I get really like jacked up by that. I like the, <laughs> I like that That's sweet, it. that sweet little piano music. All right, everybody, we are live. Welcome in to the Deshaun Kaiser episode. That is correct. Wow. Episode seven of the Barking Brown Show, and in true Deshaun Kaiser form, right in the middle when the show is going great. I'm just going to chuck something straight up in the air and just watch the chaos ensue. Perfect. I, welcome in, guys. I am your host, Jacob. I'm at Rochism13. If you are watching the video, you will see that it is on the screen. If not, it is in the description. The man to my left, your right, is the man that never misses. It is Nick Carnes over at Carnesies 817 Once again, on the screen, in the description, wherever you need to find us, we have a great Great show coming up for you guys tonight. Nick, how are we doing tonight? Dude, uh, you know what? I, 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 I woke up. Well, before I went to sleep, minicamp, all the interviews were starting, and I was listening to everything and getting excited. And then I woke up this afternoon, and I see I see Odell Beckham stretching out there without a knee brace on. Uh, I see Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Uh, uh, I see Jadavian Clowney doing drills. This is exciting. I saw uh, a little bit of uh, Tack McKinley doing some of those like uh, figure eight drills. Yeah. Ooh, the explosiveness and speed. And he's, he's your edge three. It's your edge three. It's it. All right. So uh, last week we had Sam Penix on the show. We were going to do a deep dive of Tommy, uh, of Tommy Togiai last week. We just got a little carried away with, uh, with Sam last week. If you haven't seen that episode, please go uh, listen or watch. Um, it was a, a lot of fun. A lot of knowledge dropped on us. So tonight we'll talk about Togiai. We will do a review of Greedy's rookie year. Um, because we got all excited about uh, Greedy at OTAs. So, uh, and he was out there. Uh, again today as well, mandatory camp. We'll talk about mandatory camp um, and and how everyone was there. So please relax. Um, so we will get to that as well. And we got much more, including a really, really fun top five segment <clears throat> at the tail end of the show. I tweeted this out today and I said that we would address it at the beginning of the show. So we will address uh, the Sheldon Richardson going to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, situation. Um, I said it uh, a couple of weeks ago. I've said it on Twitter. I actually believe that uh, after the draft with uh, Malik McDowell, uh, Marvin Wilson, and Tommy Togiai, that I, I didn't think it made sense. Um, uh, I think that the money can be used for extensions now. I think that money can be rollover cap for extensions next year. Um, I think, and, and of course he ends up signing for four and a lot of people, well, I think you could have got him back for four. And I say, yeah, but I would rather if he comes. So out of the three guys, Togiai, Wilson, and, um, McDowell, your kind of fringe, like young, unproven tons of potential guys. I think they may to keep two and somehow in some crazy worlds, me, you know, the three of us talked about it last week. They might keep all three. If Sheldon is, is brought back, you're only keeping one or two max. And then I think you're missing out on potentially a big player. I think it's, it's not a big deal. I think it's actually a good thing. Uh, uh, trust me on this um, bookmark this to yell at me when it is not true in six months. So uh, Nick, how do you feel about that? So I said it to you, uh, on Twitter, or I said a little piece of it to you, but um, when you look at when you, so, so Sheldon was due 13.66 million with the Browns this year. And you look and, and you say, okay, well, so how does the rest of the NFL value him in, in comparison to what he was actually due this year? And the, what he came out to is a max of, I think 4.35 million. I mean, that's yeah. that, the best he can do isn't even a third of what he was going to get with the Browns this year. And so to me, no matter how you, you no matter what talent Sheldon has, when, when you look at, when you look at that, there's obviously a disparity between what the Browns are going to pay him and what the NFL, the rest of the NFL thinks he's worth. Right. And so it, it, it's like you said, we, we are going to need that money. And so for Andrew Barry to recognize, no matter what player it is, no matter who it is, if, if you have a GM that can recognize this guy is making significantly more than the rest of the NFL would pay him, and thus we cannot pay him that, 
I think that's an incredibly valuable trait to have in, in your GM. And it was a tough decision, guys. Like, it, he was a fan favorite. He was a guy. This is our first example of being a good team and losing good players that we didn't necessarily want to lose. I want to catch up on the comments because I forgot to check them. Um, the, oh, ex, Extra Crispy Wings here says he's turning off the Tribe game for this. And, and so we have to make it good. Hey, oh, hey. That's We're fine. Out. Thank you, my friend. That's fine. Um, who That's cares? He was over crazy. Uh, it, uh, I, I talk to him pretty frequently. Uh, fantastic member of Brown's Twitter. So thank you for being here, my friend. So um, he said he wanted uh, he, he wanted a fresh tar- start, but he's going back to his old ex old lady. You know what's funny about that? You bring that up because it is it's hilarious that you said that because I saw that um, apparently he like had some nasty things to say today. Uh, something about oh the way they did me four days before the draft and blah 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 and stuff like this. Yeah, he didn't like he he like had a little bit of disdain for it. And then he's like I and like extra crispy wings said here. He said oh they would he said today he wants a fresh start. So um, you know he he went back. He wants to say that he loves us. You know what we love you too. We do. We love you too. Wait, we, wait, we really do. This went over my head. Uh, uh, Sheldon Sheldon had negative things to say about the Browns. So, and maybe someone can correct me if I'm incorrect here, but I saw something along the lines of like they asked him about when he was released, and he's like, "Well, you know, they did it. They they did it once everybody was paid." Like basically, he said, "Of course, I wasn't going to get paid because they held on to me until all of the free agency dollars were spent, and I couldn't get them." And it's like, dude, you graded like in the high 60s last year. <laughs> like, like, okay, like, you know, it, it's like you were a good player. Like, is there any one player in the Browns defensive line, a defensive tackle room that's as good as him individually? No, probably not right now, like as of right now. But as a collective whole, that room is 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 better than the the combination of uh, Ogan, Joby, and Richardson that they put out uh last year yeah so um okay this is where i want to go uh next is i want to talk about let's pop pop over here i've got like a million things over here uh the jarvis's softball game real quick i want to do a a little um oh he said he didn't want to negotiate through the draft okay yeah 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 i didn't get all the comments there it says so um jarvis's softball game i want to say that the Browns fans again showed why they were number one because on Jarvis's <laughs> charity celebrity softball game on Saturday, the Cleveland Brown faithful tailgated for five hours. This fan base is so starved to get nuts. So about their Cleveland Browns that a fan, a celebrity charity event, which is great for the charity that they were there. Yeah, that, that's that's amazing. Great cause, you know, Jarvis, very uh, charitable uh, individual. Five hours. I started seeing this on Saturday and I was, I just, I kind of, I, I was like that, um, that Antonio Banderas meme where he's like, mm, yeah, you know, and he says, I just kind of like, I sat back, like I cracked one open and I'm just like, nature is healing guys. Yeah. Nature is healing. So what do you, what do you think? Well, all this awesome stuff that came out of it, Baker's co, um, a co-winner of the home run derby. I'm sure Cowherd is pissed because he doesn't want his quarterbacks hitting dingers. Tom yeah. Brady's not hitting dingers. Tom Brady can't hit eight dingers. Is all I'm saying. Uh, probably can. That just like that's asinine of me to say. So wh- wh- where do you come out on the awesomeness of the faithful and uh, the event over Saturday? I just well, okay. So so starting with with Browns fans because that's uh, that's where you opened up here. I I think I I love seeing turnout like that. You know what? There were so many, so many videos, like not only from, uh, you know, uh, normal media sources of the softball mm-hmm. game, but just from fans all over Brown's Twitter of being there. And and that was awesome to see lots of meetups, lots of, you know, it's like because so many of us have have uh, interacted so much on Twitter over the last yeah. year but never actually met one another. And so it's like the draft and now the softball game are, are the two, you know, non football games that that have been stuff yeah yeah and so you'll love to see that um but i think it just it just speaks to you know how 
the Browns are finally good, and we have and we had so much fun with last year, but we couldn't all be together for it. And so now it's like literally anything that is an opportunity, it, there everybody is. We're tailgating, we're, we're grilling, we're drinking, we're it, good, good. I, I love seeing it. I, I love seeing it. Um, but I think the, the thing that spoke the most to me personally is that so many of Jarvis's teammates showed yes. up there to support him. Mm-hmm. Uh, be, because because I'm sure I'm I'm like I'm sure if if Dak Prescott hosts a charity softball game, like some of the Cowboys are going to come. Um, but do do that? Do as many come to to support Jarvis as as um, that? I I don't know. Um, I I think I think that the the Browns and especially <laughs> it seems like the the camaraderie they have on offense is is really something, and I think I think it's going to help them. Uh, through the season. Absolutely. And I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing no, at no, our boy, Ed and Columbus over here. Hi, he, he did, he did his best Colin Cowherd impression. He said, I don't want my quarterbacks flipping bats and disrespecting the game. Um, yeah. And in extra crispy wings ways in here. Yeah. Travis Kelsey was there, yeah. man. Like, like Darius Garland was there from the Cavs, And um, that was nice to see. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I, I liked that. Um, you, you know, like, you know, Mac Wilson was like, but you know, Baker Mayfield was holding people's babies and taking yeah. selfies and stuff like, like it, it just, it felt like we've had all you, you, you touched on it, man. We have all had all this pent up like excitement and, 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 and fanfare for this. And we just were able to let it out. And not only did the players show up, but they showed out like they, they showed up and they talked. Uh, it, it, he even said that the chiefs, he said he even said that the Chiefs ain't want none. Yeah, I mean, he got on there and said, like, hey, they're they're legitimate Super Bowl contenders. And I understand, like, what else is he gonna say? Of course he has to say something like that. But like he went into it, man. He didn't just say like that cookie cutter stuff that you say because you have to say it. Like he goes into it and he's just like, you know, hey man, like there's going to be more playoff matches between the two of us. Like, hey, they're probably like people say the Browns didn't had a tough draw with the Chiefs week one. Fuck, man, the Chiefs had a tough draw with the Browns week one. Like, let's not forget. Like, like let's not act like these these are the same old Browns, buddy. And 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 you know what? I take this opportunity to congratulate our uh, good friend Andy Lytle. Andy Lytle announced today that his show is now a part of the OBR. So Andy Andy Lytle now works for the OBR. Andy Lytle will now co-host. This sounds like a damn good time. He will now, not the same old Browns, will now be co-host by Andy Lytle and Stephen Thomas. So the two of these just goofballs and in, in, in awesome, awesome members of Brown Twitter, I just want to uh, shout out to Andy. Yeah, and, well, congratulations and, to both of them. Um, I love extra crispy wings again. I love the fact that these are the Browns I grew up with in the eighties, but better. Uh, we should have won that damn postseason game. He said, yeah, yeah, well, we're not, we're not, we've moved past that. I don't want to rip the bandaid off again. You know what? Andy said that this might be the most excitement since the, I've been around the Browns since the 87 season, which that would have been the year after the drive, unless the year after they lost in 86 to uh, after the fumble in the drive. And then there was still that, you know, the excitement in 87. He said, I think that's, I think that's where we are. Um, it's- so I have a really interesting question. I really, I need to have your, uh, your take on this. Okay. This is, I've, I've, I've been thinking about this all week. Okay. Um, so do you think if animals could talk, who would be the rudest? Wow. Mm. <laughs> I told you I was going to chuck this some bitch right straight up in the air at some point. And you were not prepared. You know what? No, I, I was not prepared. You know, um, I, I got a real plot. I, you know, raccoons just kind of seem like giant jerks, you know, <laughs> they, they get in your trash. They they don't care if you're if you're they, they'll come into your garage. They the will hot take the hot t- extra crispy wings just weighed in and said what I agree and it's cats. Cats are jerks. Cats are assholes. Cats MC are- Lawrence hanging in here. What's you got got for us, buddy? You said the only thing that I the only thing hasn't changed since I was a kid in the sixties is the passion and the loyalty. Not without without question. I Ed I just- says, go ahead. Oh no no! no. Uh, I, I'm glad to hear Ed weigh in. 
the Chiefs and Mahomes could turn out to be like Elway and the Broncos. Got to get by him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Ed yeah. says the meanest animals in the world are skunks. I they just, already suck and they can't talk. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say it's funny that you mentioned ripping the Band-Aid off when uh, a certain a certain media member today uh, tried oh, attempted to rip that Band-Aid off uh, with Nick Chubb. And, he attempted uh, to put it back on so he could rip it off. <laughs> I love Go ahead. But I, so, okay, so so and I tweeted about this, but I, I think it, I think it's uh, it's worth it's worth uh, mentioning is that uh, today Tony Grossi was it was part of the uh, the Nick Chubb press conference and he asked Nick Chubb he said uh, did the drops against Kansas City motivate you to work on your pass catching in, in this off season? To, to which Nick, Nick Chubb paused for a second and he said yes. <laughs> and that and that was and, and then tony I, I think he wanted it he was waiting for more because he was like uh and, then, and they're like oh next question yeah and it's just yeah. very awkwardly moved on from that where's, where's the baker mayfield soundbite of uh jesus tony like <laughs> dude I, 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 I can't come I, on i you like, know what I just okay. So obviously, and I mean, I think we all know it. And you and I, you and I are very much team Nick Chubb. Okay, and but I think we can we can all agree that that Nick Chubb needs that there was green grass in front of him. Those are great play calls. And, and so we know that. Yeah, they but, were bad plays. Yes, but do we really need to rehash the playoff loss, the first gathering that the Browns had? The first, uh, here's a new yes. season. Everything's exciting. Do we, re, re, do we really need? Is that where we need to go? Is, is that productive in any way? Like no. I I read a stat and I didn't confirm this, but I would love to. Uh, this the it was that that Nick Chubb did not have a drop last season until that game. I and think I'm, it was something like that. Yeah. And so I mean, so a. Nick Chubb was was l- lethal on his screen passes all year, right? That's one of the Browns' best plays. He just won. He he sealed the playoff victory the week before with a screen pass against the Steelers, right? So you know that 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 is what that is the Browns' bread and butter, especially without dynamic threats with Odell Beckham out. You're, you're deep. So the longest play the longest browns offensive play from scrimmage in week 17 to get into the playoffs and in the wild card round was the nick chubb the nick chubb run in week 17 and the nick chubb screen pass in in the wild card round nick chubb is your most dynamic offensive player in both of those games and you're literally digging at him for for those drops i i it just Time and place, maybe after that game. And and if I remember correctly, he Nick Chubb even admitted, you know, that he wished he could have those those drops yeah. back. So so why are we why are we going back to that? I, that's that's what I want to know. Um. So extra crispy wings lets us know that Grossi and Mary Kay are a cancer to Browns media. Um. It's I, I got nothing else. Uh, Nate. Weighs in and says yes because that was the last game of the year. Uh, who do we play week one? And, and and I'll say this: I understand talking about the Chiefs game, but the fact of the matter that you automatically like that was what you wanted to ask him the first opportunity you got to talk to him about minicamp. Like, why are we talking about that? Let's talk about where we are, where we're focused on, where we're going, not where we've been. Like, because coach has said it a million times. Like, we're moving on. We're moving past where we were. Uh, we want to be better. We want to be better. Um, it's Cleveland. That's how they do us. It is. It is. It, it pretty is. Oh gosh. Oh no. Tony yeah. Pizza's in the house. Uncle Rizzo. All oh. right. <laughs> He says, Nikki, babe, I think you meant bread and butter fingers. <laughs> Hashtag free grossy. <laughs> yes, but well, you know what? I, and I don't want to attack the guy personally. I just want to attack the question because I know a lot of people are saying, you know, fire the guy and, and all that stuff. That's not where I'm trying to go. But I'm just saying, of all the questions you could ask Nick Chubb on the first day of minicamp, that. I just, I mean, come on, you can do better that we can do better than that. It felt, 
it felt like you're grasping for straws. Like you're you're at the point now where like I, I get these interviews that have been happening like with coach and there was not a lot you could go on, but now you're actually at camp. Like this is actually a mini camp. I know it's not training camp, but this is a mandatory mini camp. Everyone is here. Um and <laughs> extra crispy wings wants to talk about the mistakes in the Baltimore game. We're not talking about that. We're not doing it. We're not gonna do it. Don't you bring up that bad juju, Ricky Bobby. We're not doing it. So I, I don't know. It felt like it was just grossy being grossy. Like, I started to watch some of those pressers today. And then like they started, they asked everybody about their contract. They asked coach about Callie Bronson 15 times. I'm like, I'm not watching them. I'm not, as soon as Tony comes on here and asks questions like that, I'm not watching them. There was, there was some, some really good stuff in there. Um, you know, to me, you know, when, when they say, when they ask Nick Chubb if his contract bothers him and he says, and his first response is, I'm going to be, no matter what happens, I'm going to be the guy uh, this team needs me to be. Yeah, that's yeah. Nick Chubb. Yeah. Um, and then Denzel Ward's like, they ask him about a potential extension, and he's like, I'm a Cleveland kid. I would love nothing more to, than to be a Cleveland Brown. Just to, to, to me, at least hearing that, you know, especially from your super productive players that they yeah. want to be Cleveland Browns, I, I mean that that to me was good, but the, but it was otherwise surrounded by a bunch of uh, yeah. And, and it's like it's like I know a lot of people are like, of course they said that they have to say that, and it's like yeah, but in the past people have said, oh, we'll work it out and we'll see how, what it is. Not I want to be here. It it was like ah, well, I'll let my agent handle that. Uh, he says extra crispy wings wants to let us know that he will not put that evil on us. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Nate weighs in, says Nick Chubb is a class act. He really is. Uh, and, and yeah, they want to be here. We we get that comment. Yeah, they want, and that is, I think that was my takeaway from uh, from the meetings or from the pressers was that people uh, want to be here. Ed says that it, everyone wants to, or it's a, uh, it's cool. It's cool to, it's cool to be a Brown again. That's, that's, that's what it is. All right, man, let's, let's talk about a guy that uh, uh, we wanted to talk about last week and we didn't get an opportunity to talk about him. So let's move on to uh, Tommy Togi. I, as always, guys, if you've got any kind of questions or comments, just keep them firing over in the section. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I let about four or five of them get to get piled up because um, I don't like to interrupt Nick or I's thought process, but I'm also super ADHD. So <laughs> so let's see Tommy Togi. All right. I got a scouting report for you. Let me, let me get the scouting report. You would think that you would be prepared, but you're not. Um, all right. So Tommy Togi, I will say this. He only played 22 collegiate games. So that is the biggest knock on Tommy Togi. I take everything I say with a little bit of a grain of salt because Tommy Togi, has never, played over 300 snaps in his collegiate career. I don't know what his high school stats are, what it was like back then. Um, but you know, here we are with that. So Togi, I love Togi. It, it, we're getting a comment. Explain Togi for the folks. Well, you know what? That's exactly what we're going to do right here. All right. So Tommy Togi, the thing that jumps off to me, the instant you start watching it is his explosive first step. Um, I think I got it somewhere on here. I'm trying to find where I wrote it. So his he, he, he gets a jump, right? Like he gets going from stop to the play is starting almost as though he knows the snap count, right? Like he feels like he is not behind. Like the ball's not snapped and he's like, uh, no, the ball snapped and here comes Togi. He has a phenomenal, um, shit. <laughs> motor <laughs> sorry <laughs> so he has a phenomenal motor there and i wrote this comment down here and i said listen not a lot of give up in him there is not a lot of give up in him he he he's quick off the ball his first step is phenomenal he is very strong 40 reps of 225 one time i did two reps of 225 all right muscles anyway uh, <laughs> this show is just evolving very quickly i told you it was the I like, I like where it's going i'm having fun <laughs> So he's very strong. He rushes the passer pretty well. Um, I feel like his sideline to sideline speed in the run game may be his best his best asset. Okay. Um, but um, you know, you you never necessarily know with that sort of thing. He came on really strong uh, in the 2020 shortened season. I think he is no worse than a day two pick if this season was a regular season. 
He played, I think Ohio State played eight games total. He did not get to play in the national championship because of COVID situations. So he didn't even play in that many games. I think in a in a full campaign, he's probably a day two pick at worst. Um, he's he's just so raw, but he has probably the one of of their day three picks, he has the most uh superstar potential. Of course, Malik McDowell being kind of a wild card there. Um, he's slightly undersized uh, for the run game in terms of clogging up the middle, but his sideline to sideline when somebody makes somebody bounce outside like Jadavion Clowney is pretty good. Um, his hands are really good. Like the grab and shed, he, 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 if he can get his hands in there and get his hands on them very well, it, he hand fights very, very well. Um, and his and he and for once he was the one of the only day three picks that the Browns picked that actually tested well. Uh, he tested pretty well. Um, you know he was a day three pick. Um, it makes sense that he was a day three pick. He was probably the best player. He dominated Clemson, and I'm looking over here, and Ed and Columbus just said that he dominated Clemson, yeah. and he will dominate two to three years down the road. He dominated Clemson and and it was like I I really wish and I'm not saying like that that national championship goes differently but I really wish he could have had an opportunity to play Alabama uh, it would have been fun it probably potentially puts him into late day th- day two as a result yep. he is he is really really good um I think he plays you know a couple it probably if his body can take 300 snaps, that's probably his sweet spot. Sweet spot is three to 400 snaps this year. Um, I, I think he's really good. And um, you know, that's where I am. I I like, I like what you're saying. Um, and you know what? So I, I actually wanted to ask you about this because when I was looking at, at Togi, I um, it, it bore a similar resemblance to me to uh, Jordan Elliott. Because, yeah. and and I know to- Togi I maybe just didn't have um, the opportunity in games to put up the yeah. production, but yeah. both the both Togi I and Elliot ha- tested athletically well, whereas uh, their production may not have the stats did not come necessarily, mm-hmm. but you can see that that they from an athletic profile why the Browns would want them. In, in, in Togi's situation prior to this year uh, was a situation where there was just a too many chefs in the room, you know, mm-hmm. too many chefs in the kitchen. And then he just, it wasn't for lack of ability. He just was waiting his time. And it just so happened his, his, his year as a starter was um, single digit games and he only missed one. And it was because of COVID, um, you know, Tony's weighing in again. He wants us to know that he knew all about Togi, but he wasn't allowed to say anything. And, and I know, I understand that. I know you knew. I wasn't allowed to tell you that I knew you know. <laughs> so, you know, um, it, it, it it's great. Nate wants to weigh in. Do we think he makes the final roster? He's a final roster guy safely. Yeah, He's a I safe know. final roster guy in my in my opinion. Extra Crispy Wings wants to know, says that's bet that was an Andrew uh, Barry pick without yeah. question. Yeah. Um, uh, Nate also says sort of a crowded room. He needs to be lights out. I think so, but I don't think a early day three pick by this regime has to worry about it in his rookie year. Um, extra, extra crispy wings wants to say that he believes it was limited. That had a lot to do with the, um, his draft. Suck. That's all it is to me. I think if you have more, it's like I, I combed over all the tape I could find and there's just not a lot, but like, you can't go back and watch. Just go back and watch the Clemson game, and don't watch Tommy Togiai snaps like where it's specifically showing you plays that he made. Just go watch the Clemson game, mm-hmm. and tell me how long you go without either hearing his name or seeing seventy-two close to the close to the ball, close to the play that was being made. He's got a lot to do. He needs to develop and grow but he i think he's i think they keep five tackles and i think he's the fourth one so i think he's pretty comfort comfortably um they keep five or six i don't know i i have this wild idea that they keep six tackles and four ends but we'll yeah <laughs> i they could. I, love it. I mean they really could um i think i, I i'm glad that we're on togi and and you you said some stuff about how you know he he just had limited time 
because I think, you know, so this is really the first time the Browns are get are have a GM that we think is going to be here for a long time, a long time. So you can start to notice trends in how they draft mm -hmm. and what they do. Um, and so I was already t uh, talking about uh, Jordan Elliott and then I wanted to hit you with a couple. So, so Richard LeCount also has mm -hmm. a shortened season. Um, but, but was, was, uh, but had production when he was on the field. Uh, Seven interceptions the last two years. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in his last 14 games. So, yes. so yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Marvin Wilson hurts his meniscus. And yeah, it was something in his knee. Yeah. Um, and they say, you know, uh, again, he could have been uh, more productive had he not had that hampering him. And then somebody I saw you were talking about today, and I was talking about a little bit. Uh, Donovan Peoples Jones has, uh, you know, the measurables you want, but limited quarterback play, so his yeah. numbers too are are a little lower. You know, I want to say so I'm I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt you, but I want to say something about DPJ because I was I was doing some stuff today, and I went on a little bit of a tangent about DPJ, and I, and I'll even go ahead and say what I said about that. Um, but DPJ fascinates me that he did drop fall to. Uh, so I look at DPJ versus Anthony Schwartz, right? That's kind of what I was doing a little bit today um, in my head where I have multiple terrifying conversations. Nate, for the record, I believe it is back to a 53 man roster. Uh, the last I checked, that is where it, um, where it is. <laughs> Let Togi, I get some training in with Garrett. Oh. Mm -hmm. Miles will take care of him. Miles and and and, and uh, everybody else will take care of him. Um, so Schwartz has suspect quarterback play. Bo Nix. Another Bo trick. Nix. Yeah. Okay. So um, Bo Nix is terrible. Um, I'll fight you if you want to say he's not because he is. Uh, Corey Kennan uh, recently said on Twitter that he started a. a like charting all of his Bo Nicks and he was just like, I got 15 minutes in and I threw up. Um, so Anthony Schwartz gets pegged as just a speed guy. And as having suspect quarterback play, he goes on day two. Um, whereas, you know, DPJ, it, it's kind of interesting where speed kills because uh, DPJ has speed, but he doesn't have, I mean, nobody has Anthony Schwartz speed outside of like three guys tops, right? Like um, it's kind of interesting and thing like that, but I uh, went on a little bit of a tangent today talking about DPJ. And I said, and I'll say this right now that if you were to rank the Browns wide receivers based on talent, based on strict raw talent, DPJ is better than every single one, not named Odell Beckham jr. Um, wow. And I said this and, and I had a conversation with the, our uh, uh, friend of the show, DW, uh, uh, today. And I said, I'm not in any way saying he will be wide receiver two this year. I'm not saying he should be wide receiver two, but if you're talking about who is the second most talented guy and who will probably be wide receiver two in 2022, it's Donovan Peoples Jones. I think if you go back and look at his RAS score, his raw athletic score, it's out of 10, right? He scored like a 9.82, like just is a ridiculous, ridiculous athletic testing, right? He's a freak of nature. He was finally, finally the Cleveland Browns took a day three pick and they let him come along slowly. And when Donovan needed to step up, the kid stepped up. Mm -hmm. And my thing is he is number two. He, he has to do it on the field. He has to take a step forward. I will never ever say that like I have a Landry Jersey hanging in my closet right now. Because I'm I am praising DPJ, I am not knocking Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry will get the second most, or maybe even the most reps at receiver for sure. That's what I'm saying. But if you were to put them in a bubble, DPJ is the second best athletically uh and talented guy. And um, you know, I think. I, I'm really excited to see what DPJ can do. I think he takes a step, a huge step forward this week. I think he 
he, or this year, I think in some way he will become wide receiver two somewhere down the line. It's not a knock on Jarvis Landry. It's yeah. just how good I think Donovan Peoples-Jones is. Well, I mean, I, and I know you saw it too, or I, I would assume you saw it, but a friend of the show, Sam Penix, tweeted out today yeah. about – about Donovan Peoples Jones, and I didn't know this. I quote yeah. tweeted it, and that was well, that was yeah. what started this. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so for those who don't know, I, I go to bed in the middle of the day, so it's kind of broken up. I, I see some, I see some things, and that's why. But uh, so, what what I wanted to say is that Sam Sam brought up a great stat that Donovan Peoples Jones had the most yards per reception of all rookie receivers at twenty, a little over twenty, which is. I mean, I mean, that's a fifth of the field, right? And and that and, and that not only was that first among rookie receivers, but that was fourth among all receivers, which is is I mean that that's a crazy stat to me. That that is big playability right there. If you can be if you can be top five in any kind of category whatsoever, that is uh, success. Okay, so um, he said extra crispy wings weighs in, says, I don't know. But as far as a replacement, I think he's good. Um, and he said, because nobody was watching him, that could be that could be part of it. But I think, I and I think that's why he still needs to make another step. Like, as is, no. Um, we got Andrew weighing in, asked what's going on. What's going on, Andrew? Hi, Glad Andrew. to have you here. Hope mm-hmm. you're having a good, good Tuesday evening. Uh, why are we sleeping on Higgins? I am not. I want to preface that. That's what I was trying to say. I'm not, I'm not dissing other players by saying I love Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah. I just think he's that good. Like Hig, like I think next year your room should be Higgins, DPJ, a first round wide wide receiver, and maybe Odell. That's probably where it is. Actually, it's probably Jarvis over Odell. And that's where I think you're going. That's where I think 2022 is probably going to be. I love Hollywood. I screamed at the TV when Freddie decided he deserved to be in the doghouse. Hollywood was the best receiver for just as David Njoku ended up being at the by the end of the year the best tight end on the uh, on the Browns. Hollywood was the best receiver at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Listen, Jarvis is gritty. Jarvis is a leader. Jarvis is passionate. I love Jarvis. I hope he retires a Cleveland Brown. That is not what I'm talking about. The point is other guys have to step up. Jarvis can't do it all. And I'm saying right now, here we are. We are. We. If you if if you are talking about top to bottom wide receiver course, and you do a top ten, and you don't think the Cleveland Browns are in your top ten then you are not paying attention. Mm-hmm. Like, look at them top to bottom. I know some people need to take some te- steps up like Donovan Peoples-Jones, but that's where I am. That's the uh, rant of the week. I, I just – I like it. I, I like it. And you know what? You you hit on it too. You The Browns finally drafted a late-round guy who did not have to contribute immediately. And, and now you're looking and you're saying, okay, you know, there's development here. There's stuff to like here. There's potential here. And, and, and I, I'm really excited. I, you know what? And they, they've needed they've needed a guy that's a little taller that that can go up and get it. And he just he fits that that bill, right? And so I I mean the only I, I still think about about that Tennessee game when when he's just streaking down. You know, th- there's nothing more perfect than than because you know we have our great deep ball thrower. And at most, um, um, highest completion percentage, Don, and Donovan Peoples Jones just streaking down the field, hits him on a dime, right, and he's gone. Just clutched it, just boop. Oh, that thing! Uh, whoa, boo! That thing is a thing of beauty. Ed wants to let us know. He says Hollywood was what uh, Reggie Longhorn was. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, um, Andrew says DPJ is a, a sleeper. Everyone was high on Pittman Jr., Claypool in the rookie season, but OBJ, o- in my opinion, it, it seconds into this next comment where he says, in my opinion, is better than both and highly underrated. Uh, athletically scoring, if I remember correctly, he did test better. I mean, it, it's, it, it is what it is. Extra Crispy Wing says, I think our receivers were held back due to Kitchen's quarterback choices. Um, like, and, and, and I think you look at the beginning of the year with the Baker Mayfield thing and like the four head coaches and the four play callers and things like that. And I just think we're finally going to get a really good look at what Kevin Stefanski 
can do a, a yeah. real off season yeah. uh, Baker, not learning top terminology and bullshit like that. I think, I think we're in for a, a thing. Hey, let's talk about greedy Williams. You want to talk about greedy Williams? Yeah. yeah, I'm in. All right. Let's talk about greedy Williams. We're going to look back here at greedy's rookie year. We got excited last week, guys. Greedy Williams was on the field. Grant Delpit was on the field. They were on the field today. Grant Lope Delpit is looking sharp guys. I saw so many clips. If you're not following the great Fred Greetham over at the OBR, you are wrong. Um, and if you want to see a bunch of awesome, awesome clips from uh, minicamp, he's he's all over it, man. He's all over it. Um, so we got really excited about seeing Greedy Williams out there. So we're like, yeah. apparently my, my Apple Watch was listening to me and it was trying to Google what I just said for the last 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, so, you know, they're talking about um, you know, we wanted to take a review back at Greedy Williams. And I will say this about, about my kind of Greedy Williams uh, take was that I'm going to put a link of it in the description down below. But um, Jake Burns did a film room last July, somewhere in there for the OBR and uh, about Greedy Williams. And and I, I took a lot of uh, tidbits from that, and and so I'm not going to try – and I'm not going to sit here and, like, pass his his uh, information off as my own. Like, I'm not going to – like, so I wanted to preface that, that a lot of this is some stuff that I saw Jake Burns talk about. And if you really, really want a really good about 15-minute deep dive into Greedy's rookie season, go back and look at that. So, Greedy Williams knock and, and Ed's weighing in. Greedy Williams' knock that fell him to the second round was his tackling ability. I re I remember that, and I'm sure you remember that as well. When when yeah. the draft was going on, like ah, Greedy can't tackle. He struggles with tackling. We're not sure what Greedy can do as a tackler. Greedy had the fifth best tackling grade grade amongst all rookies in 2019. Like I remember thinking to myself when Greedy's rookie year went on that I thought, wow, that was something I was super super worried about, and it wasn't an issue. Like greedy, like, like he, his knock in college was about tackling. Um, he did have like, um, I think I have it somewhere down here. He did have six missed tackles. Um, yeah. and some for some were and they were clearly, and this is kind of something Jake talked about that. It was a lack of effort or focus on, on those tackles that seemed to be where he was missing some of them. Uh, but he was not afraid to get physical in the run game. He was not shying away. Like if he was focused and he was paying attention, Greedy Williams would stick his head in there. He stuck him in there very well. Listen, he had a 53.6 overall coverage grade. That's not great. Guess what? It's still better than like MJ Stewart, Robert Jackson, and all of our safeties from last year. I'm just saying, I said this about Jed, that like last year, Jed did not have to be a pro bowler. He just needed to be like a 50 or, or about a 65 overall so that he was 10% or like 15% better than Greg Robinson the year before. And we were going to be okay. Um, he had a 65.4 run grade, which was pretty high amongst okay. rookies. I want to say it was like ninth or 12th. Um, his anticipation for uh, wide receivers coming out of their breaks on out routes was not good. That's something that Jake Burns highlighted. Like if you're going like a 10 route and an out route, he was getting lost behind it. He would co come up. He has elite speed. He runs a 4.37. He has elite corner speed. So if he is burnt, the play is not over. Greedy can catch up to it. He is very quick. He was not great in cover three. However, when he played man-to-man -man mirror corner, he was very good. Um, on deep routes, go routes, one routes, fly routes, which destroyed Cleveland last year. Greedy only allowed two catches for 64 yards. Greedy was the best he was at any point was on these deep go routes. Um, he doesn't give up, and he can recover when he is beat because of it. Greedy has a lot to be left on the field. But Greedy is better than a lot of what we saw last year. And if Greedy doesn't have high pressure on him, because he's also not a rookie anymore, he doesn't have, have high pressure on him because of Greg Newsom in the same room, I think Greedy can really be a step up from uh, some of what we saw last year. I I, I like a lot of what you're saying. Um, and, and, and those are those are really good. Oh, God, because the, the Browns just got absolutely toasted. On, on Mason Rudolph just... Oh man. That week 17 game. That was, it was so embarrassing. He just take two steps back and chuck it straight up. Yeah. 
I, I think about, you know what? I think about Chase Claypool doing that to the Browns. I, I think about CeeDee Lamb just, just eating the Browns alive against oh, Dallas. God. Just, yeah. just th- those, those bigger receivers like that, that, that could run those. I mean, I mean, just, just destroyed the Browns. So, I mean, that's, that's okay. So that's good news. You know that. Yeah. Um, and, and so obviously you're right. You, um, you know, greedy needs development. Um, but the, the one thing that's encouraging to me, it, and I, I forget Troy Hill exists a lot of the time. I, Dude, so do I. And I would like, he was one of my favorite signings. And then, like, people would be like, hey, don't forget, you guys got Troy Hill. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's embarrassing. Yeah. You, I mean, they, to be fair, you, you literally brought in almost an entirely new defense. It's, it's kind of hard to keep, like, like Tack McKinley's another one that I like was thrilled about when we signed him. And then I think, and then I'm like, to Davian Clowney tunnel vision. And then I saw him out there today. I'm like, Okay, you know. Did you see Clowney running? Yeah, I, I know he's just running. I know, but but again, he's recovering Sweet. from it from a, an injury too. Looks good, looks good. Um, but the the one thing I wanted to say is that Joe Woods admitted himself that DBs are his bread and butter, right? So yeah, got- he will. He's always a DB coach at heart. He said yes, yes, and so you know for greedy. For for greedy it, to be in the situation where obviously he needs some development, you've got Troy Hill, uh, you've got Greg Newsom, you've got Denzel Ward. So you know maybe now it's similar to Donovan Peoples Jones who needed some development, similar to a lot of guys who needed you know some time to come along. The, me, I, maybe Joe Woods can work some magic there, help greedy become a little more anticipatory, and then and then suddenly suddenly you've got a guy that that's helping you. And I'm not, not saying that Greedy wasn't helping, but, I mean, maybe he's just a guy that needs a little bit of time. My dog just wanted to come in and say oh, hi to everybody. I love it. I'm sorry. I got to catch up because apparently we have shook Ed in Columbus. So let's we catch did? up on the comments over here. Oh, yeah, it. we did. Hold on. We'll get there in just a second. Uh, Greedy is hungry, and I anticipate a solid year for him. As long as that shoulder is okay, I think Greedy is in a perfect spot to have a pretty good year. Listen, Ed's better half is checking in with us. He wants to let us know that she wants to let us know that Ed is visibly shaken about my Reggie Longhorn comment. You know what, Ed? I'm sorry. I will go home. Well, I am home. I will get. I will get on my phone as soon as this is over. I will educate myself, Ed, and I will be better for you. I promise. Now, Ed, I don't want. I don't want Jacob to take all the bullets here because I know. Like, obviously, I know Reggie Langhorn's name. However, uh, don't don't know a whole lot more about Reggie Langhorn than that. And is it worth both 30, 30 here, over there? Uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my friend. We, 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 I agree, and the collectively, we need to be better with our Browns history. We will. We promise we will be better. Kelly says thank you. She wants to say thank you. Thank you for so, joining um, so the D line is rotating rotation is going to be spooky. Uh, we've talked about it a million times. We'll talk about it in a million more. You're hundred percent defense is crazy. A F it is dude. It is when you really just think about everybody that is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, have we mentioned how awesome Nick Chubb is yet? Not enough. We have not no, mentioned it no, enough. No. This, I, this is a Nick Chubb Stan show. It is. It is. It absolutely. You know what? I need to bring this up. Um, because I'm glad you said that, Jacob. Because because to, everybody says, or, or a lot of people say, you know, Cleveland wants to pay Nick Chubb. I think a lot of people in Cleveland want to pay Nick Chubb, but they say running backs don't matter. Okay, so let's play that game for a second. So I want to ask you, Jacob, if if so, I I knew, I knew this was coming. <laughs> Hi, Whitney. Yeah, um, my wife says I'm cute. Okay, that's that's the, you know that's the kind of support that that really just lifts you up. You, you love to see it. And 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 uh, Dar- Darunia, thank you for joining. I, I just want to I want to say, longtime friend of Browns Twitter. Um, but but I want to ask you, Jacob, because so so people say that running backs don't matter. But if the say okay, so if running backs don't matter, say the Browns just have Kareem Hunt all year and Nick Chubb is not a Brown or he's hurt all year or whatever. I don't want to wish that juju on him, but I'm just saying, say the Browns don't have Nick Chubb. Do do the Browns make the playoffs? No. 
And I'll say this. I'll say that Steed, Steed's weighing in here saying I'm Ite. Oh, this is just... This has just become a hate show on me, and I don't know what I deserved it. What the fuck did I just? I I'm done. There it is. That's why I deserved it. That's that's why I deserved it. Apparently, I can't talk. So, no. And I'll say this: Baker had a learning curve, man. Like there was a big um, learning curve there. It, 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 if you don't four play callers four years. Just absolute chaos. No off season. Baltimore week one. They get blown the hell out. Go back the and just look and just say, hey, where like look at those games. Look at the the, the things that Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt did. And 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 what did we hear? What did we hear for so so long? And that was Okay, Baker, like they're winning with Baker, not because of Baker. Yeah. Yep. And I think for a few games out the stretch, you know, outside of like he played pretty well in the first half against Indianapolis, and then he really turns the corner against Cincinnati. I, I'm not sure if if Nick Chubb's not there for uh, you know this Nick Chubb and Cream Hunt dominated Cincinnati on that Thursday week too. Two hundred yards uh, together. Yeah, and, and I mean, you look, and of course, Dallas was more OBJ than it was. That I I think that easily that three or four of they started four and one. Mm -hmm. At best, they were two and two without Nick Chubb. I think I think somewhere because I know Nick Chubb gets hurt during that four and one stretch. Yeah. So I think at best they're two and two, uh, or I'm sorry, the four and one. So they would have been like three and two or two and three somewhere around that. So no. No, I'll say that. I, I and, and if you want to, this is a Nick Chun, Chubb Stan show. If you want to fight is. about it, let's fight about it. I got to catch up on these comments because apparently shit's just going wild over here. So let's see. Ed, Ed, Ed wants to weigh in. He says, sorry, you guys make me feel so young. Fountain of youth. Barkin Brown's baby. Reggie didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. We appreciate it. My buddy Steed, he says, I've been here the whole time. My wife is making weird comments about how cute I am. I love you. I'll be in to eat dinner in a little bit. Um, so Kelly weighs in. Uh, great point, Nick. Without Nick, last <laughs> name, not Carnes. The Browns don't make the playoffs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. That's what I'm here to say. Um, if, Nick, if running backs don't matter, how do the Browns – the Browns don't make the playoffs without Nick, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb matters. I don't care what position he plays. X, extra crispy wings says they'd still make it. I think they still had a shot to make it, but they had to get 11 wins without to Everyone. get in and they barely got in. And I, I think they lose one or two of those games early on. Um, Nick, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb feels the, oh, sorry. I was just to say Nick Chubb wasn't hurt. He was giving the rest of the league a chance. That's what we're <laughs> in. Um, the, the, the Browns. So it's Nick Chubb seals the Houston win. Nick Chubb seals yeah. the Jacksonville win. Nick Chubb yeah. breaks open the Philly game. Nick Chubb yeah. has the 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 initial touchdown that that gives the Browns a cushion against the Steelers in Week 17, which they barely won as well. Although that's four yeah. that's that's four to me right there. Yeah. So. Uh, so it's Langhorn, not Longhorn. Apparently, I've been saying Longhorn. I apologize. Well, tell tell us about him next week. You know what? I will. I will have a full breakdown of him next week. We will Reggie Langhorn in. show. Let's do it. I can't let's, wait. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, dude weighs in. That's his name. I love it. Uh, I agreeing on Chubb helping massively to offset a slow start in the offense. Don't forget how disrupting the OBJ injury was. It really was because they didn't have a field stretcher after that. Um, Browns would have been eight and eight without Chubb. Um, yeah, I think they're somewhere around nine and seven, eight and eight, probably Agreed. without Nick Chubb, uh, for Agreed. the whole show. All right, guys. Um, we touched on a lot of stuff here. Uh, we got one more segment for you before we go out. We're going to have a lot of fun here. Yeah. Boom, boom. We're doing a top five. We're doing a list. We're going to rank our top five TV shows. That's where we're at. We are doing this. We want to have some fun. We want to kick back. We want to let a little bit lightened up. We have an enormously awesome, special, unique show for you next week. I will get into that after we rank our top five shows. So we're going to rank our top five shows. I want to say this about my criteria, and then I will ask you about your criteria. I uh, Some of this is nostalgia. My number one, I'm not sure, is actually the greatest show I've ever seen. Okay. 
but it's definitely the the most nostalgic re um rewatchable show right like that's that's where it is like that's where I'm, a nostalgia rewatchability is really key for me on top five shows and um just overall shows that make me want to tell someone else to watch them that's where we're at that is where i'm at on my top five shows so what kind of criteria uh uh are, are you using i you know rewatchability is, is huge love it um and i just think shows that that put me deeper into whatever genre it is um, and, and I'll get into that. Uh, but there's a couple of shows that it's like, I watched this show all the way through and I like it so much. I'm like, I'm going to watch another show like that. And, 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 and okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got um, that. I like that a lot. Kelly says that Ed's Ed was right. We are fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we strive really, uh, I've had like this crazy last couple of days and I'm telling you, it's just been an ops absolute nightmare the last couple of sh days, just stress wise. And so I was just so excited. I love interacting with you guys having a good time. Um, apparently we forgot about auditions on the auditions on the off uh, offense from extra crispy wings. Like, listen, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. If you want to elaborate on that, because I'm stupid and I probably did forget about something. <laughs> All right. So um, my phone, Okay, so Nick, number five, what is your fifth favorite TV show of all time? The Amazing Spider-Man. It is an animated series from the 90s. Okay. Oh, that one. Yeah, that okay. one. That, that one. Um, and, and the reason that, that it's there for me is when I look. So for those of you who don't know, superheroes are kind of a thing for me, a big thing for me. And my first introduction uh, to superheroes was Saturday morning oh, cartoons yeah. as, yeah. as like a, a five, six year old. And that animated Spider-Man show got just, just, just took this dude swinging webs and shooting and, 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 and saving the day and rescuing and being a hero. And from then on, I'm, I love superheroes. I love them. They're great. Superpowers are great. Spider-Man got me into it. Spider-Man. Um, and then like, Extra crispy wings says the funny Spider Man. It was. Yeah. It was. It was so. It was so. And then that was also the Bat Batman the animated series with yes. Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Um, Yu Gi Oh was big for me. So like, yeah, yeah like the Saturday. Oh, gargoyles. Yeah. Gargoyles is not on my list. Extra crispy wings says I bet gargoyles is on the list too. You're gonna find out. I don't know if it's on Nick's list. It's not on mine. But gargoyles used to scare the shit out of me. So <laughs> it did, dude. So bad. So number five is a show that you either love or you hate. Uh, it's The Office, okay? Like, it, it's The Office. It's the most one of the most quotable shows of all time. That's really big for me. It was beat out by num my number four, which was of the same genre. We'll get to that in just a minute. All right. The Office is like, like, if I am ever feeling down, there's like three shows that I can go to no matter what. And The Office is always right there for me it's always there it's always a friend it's always a shoulder to cry on and it's always gonna give me a good quote and it always lets me say and nobody gets it a lot of people don't get it but i always say oh how the turntables <laughs> but you know and a lot of people don't get it so the office number five nick number four. Ooh. Oh, okay I'm, I'm coming in i'm coming in uh, hot here at, at, along the same vein for me family guy just takes me okay I, yep. I, there, sometimes I can't even tell you those those Peter Griffin and the chicken fights that like just, just yes, just, yes. Just, <laughs> absolutely, dude. Like I remember the so I, the first time I was ever introduced to Family Guy, I was in the marching band in high school. Uh, I played football. I was in the marching band, things like that. One day we had a couple of hours, right? And my buddy had driven his mom's van, which had a TV in the back seat. Nice. And he had some DVDs of Family Guy. And the DVDs were of the first chicken fight. I <laughs> pissed my pants. I must have laughed so damn hard. I pissed my pants. <laughs> I'm like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Just the way that they all hate Meg for no reason. Oh. I, I work. So I'd work parking enforcement and um, everybody else that I work with are uh, 65 year old women and my 65 year old best friend at work, it loves to hate Meg. And it's just like <laughs> something that 
we have it's apparently it's family guy is cross-generational and we just didn't even know it yeah so extra crispy wings wants to say it was a good call for you for uh spider-man at number mm -hmm. five uh Darry, i can't pronounce your name and i'm um Darinuia? nia I, I'm not positive either, so I'm sorry, but longtime friend, thank you for being here, by the way. Yeah, she says that it was a hot take from me. Oh. I'm gonna, I'm bringing you some hot takes. <laughs> you she also, she also loves the chicken fights. She says t chicken fights, yes. Um, Extra crispy wings loves Steve Carell. I love Steve Carell. He's having flashbacks about being drunk because of Family Guy. <laughs> uh, Ed, Ed in Columbus wants to know, you know what grinds his gears? Steelers fans. Why don't they go steal some tea? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Ed. D Jacob, right, do you yeah. see the, the little message from Restream in there? No. It's right below. Yeah. It's, it's in the... It's in the uh, the, the, the chat column, it, it's, uh, I've received, we've received 100 messages today with Restream chat. Oh, hey. Look at us go. Active. Oh, there it is. Hello. There it is. Okay. Hey, lots of interaction. I'm having a re hey. really tough yeah, time. Okay. M MC Lawrence wants to give us his four. So we're going to Seinfeld, Andy Griffith, The Office, Twilight Zone. I've been watching The Twilight Zone because it's on Netflix and it's phenomenal. All right. Number four is my most quoted show. When I was overseas, I had a poster of my favorite characters sayings. Number four is easy. And I'm surprised I didn't put it number two or three. Number four is parks and recreation. Ooh. Parks and rec is my, one of my favorite, favorite shows. It's probably my all time favorite sitcom. Cause we're going to get into it different genres from me for the next three for my top three parks and rec is all oh, ron swanson i had a i had a poster of 30 ron swansonisms in my chew in afghanistan and i will in my favorite ron swansonism is there are and, and, and you know what baker mayfield quoted my favorite ron swanson after a win and he said you know what there's only two things i hate more than lying or it or there's only two things I hate more than losing lying and skim milk, which is just water lying about being milk. <laughs> I still love when Ron Swanson walks in and he sits down and he goes, you know what? Just bring me all the bacon and eggs you have. No, no, no. Hold on. I'm afraid what you heard was bring me a lot of bacon and eggs. But what I said was bring me all of the bacon and eggs you have. And the Ron Swansonisms, I could go on for days. Extra Crispy Wings says that we're doing the Lord's work and you are yet. Yeah, let's go. Rob Lowe, he also says Rob Lowe was great. Rob Lowe was phenomenal. If you, it, Rob Lowe's little character and Adam Scott was pretty great too. Chris Pratt, they were all just mm -hmm. phenomenal uh, in Parks and Rec. I absolutely love Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec is number four. It probably should be a little bit higher, but I, I went a little more serious on my uh, top three. Nick, let's enter your top three. Let's break the top three. Where are we at at number three? We got to do it. Okay. So, uh, so uh, among our referenced shows that make me watch other shows and mm -hmm. it has to be Breaking Bad. Uh, I love Breaking Bad. That's okay. I, I know you may not, may not agree. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, uh, but it just it brought me into this whole like anti-hero drug kingpin just just really these really messed up uh, these stories that that it's like you're rooting for the main character but you're not rooting for the main character and just uh, their journey and and how it happens and I I, I just I can't even tell you you know so Breaking Bad made me watch Better Call Saul Breaking Bad made me watch Ozark. Uh, and, and just that Ozark's Ozark. phenomenal. I, I like Ozark a lot. Um, but yeah. Breaking Bad to me just, just, it, it just, it took me and I just binged it. I just binged it and binged it. And, and I, I, to this day, I'll still watch it. So we just learned something and we have apologies to be made. Uh, so it is pronounced Darunia. Darunia. Okay. That's and, good. To know. And Darunia is a guy. And I don't know why I thought you were a girl, but I did. I'm really sorry. Um, I apologize. And I love you. Okay, so uh, Extra Crispy Wing says uh, first season was okay. I didn't like Breaking Bad. Like, I'm the one dude who didn't like Breaking Bad. And I don't know if I didn't go far enough into it. But, like, 
I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Like, here's the problem. My buddy's favorite show of all time is Breaking Bad. So he just talked it and talked to it and talked it and talked it and talked it. I don't think I ever had a fair shot at liking it. I'm going to, for you, I will start watching Breaking Bad this week. I, I will that. give it another shot. I will see. I we'll make it a love shot. I am, he's, he's never going to forgive me. <laughs> he will never forgive me. You know what? That's fair. I wronged you. And you should carry this grudge to your grave. <laughs> All right. So number three, I'm an anime ne nerd. Uh, top and bottom. Here's my, um, that's my wrong arm. Uh, there's my, let's, that's yeah. fucking, uh, that's a, oh my God. I can't figure out. There's a, uh, I'm there's trying a to see it, but it's not, it's not. There it is. There it is. There's my Kingdom Hearts, my two Keyblades, uh, right. my Kingdom Hearts tattoo on the side of, side over there. I am a big anime nerd. Number three is not my favorite anime of, no, of all time. Number one will be my favorite anime of all time. It's strictly on uh, rewatchability. Well, nostalgia, really. Number three for me is Bleach. Um, uh, Bleach is a long-running anime that is actually set to return after a, I uh, believe, twelve-year or eight to twelve-year hiatus to finally animate the Thousand-Year Blood War arc, which is the best arc of the series. I am a huge nerd. I am rewatching Bleach uh, at the end of it of a rewatch now, um, and I love it. It's full of action. Uh, full of swords. I love sword fighting. There's a ton of sword fighting in there. I love Bleach. Bleach is number three. Um, hey, look. Yeah, look at that. Look Beautiful. at this. I have been Beautiful. forgiven because of Bleach. There we go. There love it is. It. Bleach it. is mending friendships. That's why you should watch Bleach. All right. All right, Nick. We're at number two. Uh, I just want to say real quick. I've never watched Parks and Rec. Um I don't know why I tried to get into it. It didn't happen. I'm going to do you the same favor. I'm going to watch Parks and Rec. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Trust but, me. Yeah. I can't wait. Um, and, and so, so um, in the vein, I'm a big sci-fi nerd. I love sci-fi. Yeah. I eat it up like candy. And just recently, I just recently, finally, because of HBO Max, jumped in and joined the Rick and Morty train. Like just, just and I can't I uh, I watched it all the it's way through. Phenomenal. It's it's just phenomenal. it's it's so and I'm watching it again. I'm watching it again right now. I, I can't get enough. I cannot. And I saw season five is coming. Season five is coming. Oh god, I'm so excited. I they have like a Terminator episode that 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 Terminator episode where where they like send those like weird hybrid things back in time. I just uh, all those references, those pop culture references, just get me. I just. I, like alien, I love alien sci-fi, you know, and they do like a face hugger episode. It just all of it. I I, I, I sing I'm, the get swifty song all the time. <laughs> you son I, of I a just, bitch, I'm in. Hey, son of a bitch. Um, so extra crispy wings says I have the Ichigo Bonkai sword. I'm pretty upset about that. I'm not going to talk to you anymore because I don't have one. <laughs> Um, dude says skip season one's a park season one of parks and rec, which is only six episode. It is a little rough. I will agree with him that that is a little rough. It does take a little second. All right. We're going to go number two. Um, and this show is a classic. It has my favorite man crush of all time as the lead. And it takes place in Kentucky. Oh yeah. My number two show is justified. Um, I love Justified with Timothy Oliphant. He is a U.S. Marshal, uh, and he's dealing. He goes back to his hometown to be a marshal and deal with the drugs and um, the drug trade. And like his dad's a big drug head, and he's always like dealing with his dad. And I think I don't remember how his dad dies. I don't remember if he has to kill him or not. But uh, spoiler. Um, but. Justified is phenomenal, man. Like Raylan Givings, uh, played by Timothy Oliphant, is one of my favorite TV characters. And it's just, I tell everybody, like, have you seen Justified? Like, like Justified, you should see Justified. Like, Justified is a big deal to me. I think it's a phenomenal show. That's my number two. Hmm. I like I, I'm right, going to have to watch that too because I have never seen it. I want to sneak in an honorable mention before you do your number one. Hit me. And then I'll do my number one. The show that I have rewatched more than any show ever is is and will for always be Scrubs. So it will always be Scrubs. Scrubs is phenomenal. It was probably just outside the top five. And as you can see, the Office Parks and Rec Scrub, um, you know, 
it is all uh, uh, right there uh, uh, together um, with me in the same genre. It's, it's pretty fun. I really, I really love uh, uh, Scrubs. So, all right, number one. Uh, you know what? And it's in your top five, and it took me on a journey. It is The Office. I have watched it a, a bajillion times through. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about getting Peacock just to, to watch it again. I, yeah. you know what? I say question. I, you know what? I didn't even realize it, but I started saying question, like like Dwight, and, and I'm like I just, you know, and somebody pointed it out to me one day, and I didn't even, I just like internalized it. Uh, I, I could sit question. and watch that show all day. All day. I have, I have sat and watched that show all day. We're we're getting a word over here that Psych is up there. Psych is up there. Psych is phenomenal. I love Psych. Yes, absolutely. Um, I do. I do have an honorable mention, but I think you might be about to say it, so I'm not going to say it yet. Number one is nostalgic. It's all about nostalgic. Like, you know what? Hold on, hold on. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. Well, so I, I'm, I'm going to give a brief spoiler because Jacob's not even here. Uh, my honorable mention and something I watched as a kid and need to re need to dive back into because it's had things since is Dragon Ball Z. I, you know what? I had. I remember Toonami. The days of Toonami were wow, wow. The days of Toonami. Just another, another. I, I don't. I don't even know. I didn't even know what I was getting into back then. But just these dudes and, and, and these girls just with these powers and blasts and flying around and and it's like superheroes, but it's like it's like just raw battling. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. Number one. Number one is. Um, it's, I could hear everything that was said. So. Oh, okay. I know what is you it? said about me. Um, num number one is 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 a show that took me uh, on a journey. A show that taught me that sometimes <laughs> you just fight harder for the people that you care about. It was a show that taught me the meaning <laughs> of protecting people. It was a show that I loved <laughs> as a child that I just watched a couple of days ago. Um, I could just, I could just, uh, there's my Broly from super. Um, yeah. Asking about if I've seen super, yeah, I'm rewatching the tournament of power right now. I haven't seen um, anything anything beyond the Cell Saga. I have not seen, and that's a giant misstep on my part. So Vegeta is my favorite. Oh, oh God! Hold on, hold on. I love, I love. Oh, oh man. It's you know what I should I should have had it in my top five, and I just didn't. Um, and that's you know what that's that's a misstep on my part. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize because Dragon Ball Z deserves. What what is this? What is this? This is my autographed. Vegeta, oh, God, my 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 Christopher Sabat autograph, Sabat autograph here. Wow, there we go. So, guys, that for those of you who did not, who are not watching, I just showed a bunch of really nerdy Dragon Ball Z figures that lost me followers. Tommy Togiai, Tom, Tommy Togiai signed in a Dragon Ball Z shirt. I want to say, yeah. Oh well, I mean, um, uh, Miles Garrett's. Dog's name is Gohan. Few uh, 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 David and Joku and Duke Johnson fusion. Darren Fells. Darren, Darren Fels, sorry, yeah. Darren Fells. My fault. Yeah, did the fusion, fusion dance, guys? Oh man! All right, guys, like that. That's what we got for you guys this week. Like, uh, I'm really excited uh, for next week. Um, next week, we are going to get four fans, four supporters of the show. They're going to join us. They're all going to get 10 minutes to talk Ooh. a piece. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to talk it. Uh, we're going to start it off the show. We're going to do James Hudson's deep dive. Uh, and then we're going to get some people on there. Um, and extra crispy wings is an old nerd buddy. I'm right there behind you. I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm only 30. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we're going to get some fans on here. We're going to, it's going to be the first of many, many opportunities. Ed and Columbus is going to speak on this show next week, guys. This is a big deal. Ed and Columbus will be yeah, probably will. the head. He will be the head, the headliner. So I just got a tweet from the great Fred G Greetham. I just saw that, that Fred Greetham has tweeted me back. So Did that's you really damn cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was repping Fred Greetham on Twitter all day today because you know it's this is a big deal. So yeah, that uh, that's is, where we're at. This has been uh, I, I, the last thing. I never knew how many ways there were to say Kamehameha until I yeah. watched Dragon Ball Z. What seventy five? Oh. The answer to that question is seventy five. So this has been the Deshaun Kaiser episode of the Barking Brown Show, episode seven. Look at us chugging along. I love it, Jacob. You brought your A game. You're great. All of our chat, thank you. This has been the most active chat we've ever had. So ever. thank you. I love this. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please, if you, if you would drop a little like, maybe a comment. I'm dedicated to being more to being more active with YouTube. So if you want to comment, I will. And Jacob will, I'm sure, answer you. I would love to have conversations. Um, that subscribe button, if you're listening on, on the podcast, Jacob so wonderfully set that up. Thank you, Jacob. Um, no matter how you're listening, watching, being here, thank you to everyone. Um, you're you're all great. So I'm Nick. He's Jacob. And as always, go Browns. <laughs>